The chair now recognizes the gentleman from New Jersey. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker I uh, rise today to honor Larry Doby, a sports legend, a pioneer of American civil rights, a man who proudly served his country, a fellow native of the streets of my hometown, Patterson, New Jersey, where he was a star multi-sport athlete at Eastside High School, well known for his character. I want to thank Jim Manasi, for the work that you did tirelessly trying to get enough signatures <laughs> both last year and this year. Great job. And I know the brothers and sisters in Ohio are very proud of you. And I want to thank Maxine Waters who made it very, very possible to bring this to the floor today. My deepest, deepest thanks. He did serve in the United States Navy uh, in the Pacific during World War II. And after an honorable discharge in 1946, he returned to New Jersey to pursue his career in baseball with the Newark Eagles after being scouted at Hinchcliffe Stadium in Patterson. Now, Hensco Stadium is now in the historic district of Patterson. Uh, the same field I played on as a kid, which gave me the delusions of making it to the major leagues, <laughs> almost, but not quite. <laughs> we were proud that Larry Doby achieved that greatness. And in 1946, Larry helped the Eagles win the Negro World Series championship over the legendary Satchel Page. Think about that and the Kansas City Monarchs. Larry Doby hit 372 with one home run, five RBIs, and three stolen bases in that World Series. Many believe Larry Doby would be the first to break the Major League Baseball's infamous color barrier. But we know what happened. On April the 15th, 1947, Jackie Robinson took to the field in Ebbets Field, and on July 5th, 1947, Larry Doby integrated the American League with the Cleveland Indians, and 71 years ago last week. 71 years. Being second did not make his challenge any less difficult or his courage any less remarkable. Larry was also treated to horrible racism. Even some of his teammates shunned him. Larry Doby took that abuse wherever he went. Imagine that burden. Imagine the courage it would take to stand in front of that every day. And yet, he handled the adversity with bottomless strength and poise and dignity. There was no interleague play back in 1947, and certainly no ESPN. <laughs> Baseball fans from the American League only areas like Northern Ohio, Michigan, and around Washington, D.C., would never be able to see Jackie Robinson play. So it was Larry Doby who integrated the American League parks. The poise and the courage of Larry Doby was a spore source of inspiration for so many. I know his family very well, as well as Larry. He knew it too. Larry once said, I knew being accepted was going to be hard, but I knew I was involved in a situation that was going to bring opportunities to other blacks, unquote. Besides being a pioneer, Larry Doby was no slouch on the diamond. He played 13 years. He led the Indians to the, their last World Series in 1948. And I remind, I remind Mr. Renacci of that point. <laughs> They're due. <laughs> he was voted to seven All-Star teams. When it was all done, he finished with 253 home runs, 1,000 RBIs, a cool lifetime batting average. Even when he was retired, Larry Doby continued to break barriers. As Mr. Renacci pointed out in 1978, he became the manager of the Chicago White Sox. He became only the second African-American African -American uh, uh, manager of a major league team. His play on the field might have been good enough by itself, but in his, he had his ability and he had his courage. 
Larry Doby was rightly elected to the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1998. I made that trip to, Mo to Co Cooperstown, as many folks from Ohio and many people from Patterson, New Jersey did. I was filled with pride watching this product of Patterson ascend to the Parthian of America's game. But even after he was finished in baseball, Larry Doby wasn't finished. He continued to make significant contributions to his community. He served as the director of community relations with the National Basketball Association, the New Jersey Nets, where he's deeply involved in building several inner city youth programs. This was a special, special person, Mr. Speaker. This bipartisan bill will posthumously award Larry Doby with a Congressional Gold Medal the highest award bestowed by the United States Congress on extraordinary individuals. It is right recognition for Larry Doby's athletic feats, his courageous leadership, the opportunities he created for others, and the inspiration he gave to millions. So H.R. 1861, the Larry Doby Congressional Gold Medal Act, with my friend Representative Jim Renacci, is a big deal. I also would like to thank the Senate sponsors of the companion legislation, Rob Portman, Bob Menendez, Cory Booker, Sherrod Brown, Tim Scott, and Lindsey Graham. Since coming to the Congress, I've tried to support the legacy of Larry Doby. We passed an act of Congress to, to name the post office of Patterson after him. We worked hard to make sure he was recognized by the Postal Service with a beautiful postage stamp. We are fortunate to have heroes who inspire us to achieve our best and lead our communities towards the positive change. These are uniters in our community, and that's what we need more of. Today, we are proud to recognize Lawrence Eugene Doby as one of those heroes. And I thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield back the balance of my time.